Hi, I'm Kat and I play Red. This year I've decided I'm going to do one video a month focusing on an older game. Um, I think there's a big, you know, cult of new with bought games, but there's some really great games out there that have kind of got lost in the mix, forgotten about. I considered too old and past it. So we're going to have a look at some of them. Um, last month we looked at Docmas. This month we're going way, way back in time to 1999. That's like 24 years ago. That's terrifying. Um, and we're going to have a look at Union Pacific. Um, now this has got a familiar name on it. It's designed by Alan R. Moon. This was five years before Ticket to Ride, um, but this is also a re-implementation of a game he did called Airlines that was released even earlier in 1990. Um, but we love train games, so we're going to have a look at the train game, Union Pacific. Let's have a look at how it plays. The Union Pacific Railroad is a freight hauling railroad that operates 8,300 locomotives over 32,000 miles of route in 23 states west of Chicago and New Orleans. It is North America's premium railroad franchise. You also see quite a lot of them around Dallas, which is pretty cool. At the start of the game, you're going to place trains on the specified spaces on the board. Each company has one train. They start the game with one train, except for El Paso and Rio Grande, which start with two. And those spaces on the board are marked with the colour that matches the company. So we've done that bit already. We're going to shuffle the track cards, um, which are these, which we kind of did, but let's just do quickly. And you're going to deal three to each player. You're always going to have three cards in your hand at the end of the turn. So keep an eye on that. So there's my three track cards. We've then got our deck of, if you like, normal share cards, and we'll explain why. They're normal in a minute. So we have these. We're going to shuffle these and deal four to each player. So let's just go one, two, three, four. And we're going to put four out on the display. So one, two, three, four. Now we've done that, we can prepare the share deck for the game. Um, this is very similar to Pandemic. If you've played Pandemic, you'll know exactly what this is. There are four dividend cards. These will go into the deck. Whenever one of them is drawn, play stops and a scoring phase will occur. So we're going to take six cards from top. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's pile A. Draw 18, three, six. 10, 18 cards and we're going to put one dividend card in there and shuffle it so we're going to put that under there and we're then going to put these three into the bulk of the deck and put that at the bottom so let's say if you've played pandemic it's a very similar thing to what you do with the pandemic cards so just very quickly do that put that on top and our deck is now ready each player will start the game with a union pacific shares so these are our not normal share cards if you like um, that goes into my hand now the first thing i'm going to do at the start of the game is choose one of my share cards to go down on the table. So, what do I fancy? I'm, I'm going to be sad and predictable and I'm going to put a red share down for 
I can't read it upside down, for the Billings Northern Light line. So now we're ready to play the game. On initial looks, the map looks fairly similar to Ticket to Ride because we've got these spaces for trains to go on. However, not all tracks are created equal. There are four types of tracks shown on the map and on the track cards. Most companies are limited to certain tracks and these little player aid cards help you see that. It's also got it on the share cards. So the green can use all four types of track, red three, yellow two and so on. Um, and these cards help you out. Now these cards show you each company, the number of shares in each company, the number of trains and the types of tracks that each one can use. At the start of your turn, you will always draw a track card. So now we have four in hand. You then have the choice of one of two actions. You can either build track or you can invest. So to build track, you're gonna select a track card from your hand and place a train of your choice onto the appropriate space. So I have red shares down. I kind of want to go with red. Let's have a look. That one's quite nice because I can go here. So I'm going to play a track card, take a red train and place it. Now, when you place track, you can choose any color of train you want as long as the company can build on that kind of track. The train must be connected to the main station, which is here. The company doesn't already have track in that section, so I couldn't put another one there. Actually, I could have put that red there, no mind. We've done that now. After playing and, whoops, discarding our track card, you're going to get a chance to draw a share and put it in your hand. You can draw either from the display here, from the top of the deck, or you can always take a Union Pacific share. Maybe let's pop these there. So you can take one of these, one from the top, or a Union Pacific share. If you draw a dividend card, play stops and a scoring occurs, but we're not near that yet. After you've drawn a card, you can choose to exchange any share card in your hand for a Union Pacific share. The share you swap out goes in the box, is discarded and no one else can have a look at it. Now, at the moment, I'm placing red, so I'm actually just going to take another red share and oof, refill the display. Rather than placing track, you can choose to invest instead. If you're investing, you still draw a track card at the start of your turn, always draw a track card, but you're gonna place shares from your hand instead. You can place as many shares as you have in one company. So let's just say I've got all these red. I could choose to put down all my reds if I wanted to, except I only have the one. Alternatively, you may place one share from two different companies. So I'm actually going to place that second red one and I'm going to place my Union Pacific. So you can place all of one color or two cards of different colors. At the end of a turn in which you've invested, you're gonna have four track cards. So you need to make a decision and discard one of these. And I don't really know, I'm gonna just discard that one. And then I'm back down to three track cards in my hand ready to draw one at the start of my next turn. Whenever a dividend card is drawn, you're going to stop play and score. 
So let's just set things up for a score here. So we've drawn a dividend card. So pop that on the top and let's look at scoring. The amount of a company's dividend is based on the number of trains that have been placed for that company. Each train and the station itself is worth one million, is it pounds, is it dollars? It's dollars, it's worth one million dollars. However, not all shareholders will necessarily score. So let's have a look at, let's have a look at green because it's first on the card and that's how I like to do it, is working through these cards. So green here, we have one, two, three, four, and one for the station, so five. So El Paso and Rio Grande is worth five million dollars. Now, I don't have any shares, so I get nothing. Red is one, two, three, four, five. Always remember the station. So it's five million. Now, if Rob had one red share, he'd get second place. I'd get first place. So I would get five million dollars. And the money's red, look, for the five. Rob would get half of that rounded down, so he'd get two for that. And you're gonna go through each company and score like that. So in the example we have here, our orange peachy color is worth four million. The yellow, again, would be five because there's four trains and a station. So whoever has the highest value gets the full value and whoever has the second highest number of shares will get half that value. If you're the only person, if I was the only person with red, I'd actually get the five for first place plus an extra two for second. So it's well worth grabbing all the shares of one color if you can. There are four dividend payments throughout the game. You saw me put the four cards in. Once we've done the fourth and final scoring, the game ends and you're gonna add up the total amount of money you have. Now, Union Pacific shares will only score from the second round onwards. And there's actually a little handy chart, if I can find it, um, that tells you what they score for each round. And again, like all the other shares, they have a first and a second place. So excuse our German version here, um, but there's this little chart here for Union Pacific because they don't have trains, they don't have a station, they have a fixed value as shown here. So you can see in the first scoring phase they score nothing, but as the game goes on it gets much bigger, which will happen with all of the companies. At the end of the fourth dividend payout, the player with the most money wins. We love Union Pacific. Um, a friend of ours bought it from a charity shop many years ago um, and we spent quite a while hunting for a copy. Um, let's say our version is German um, but it is completely language independent so this is our nice German um, rule book and we have actually got an English printout um, but obviously none of the components have got language um, so you, if you can pick it up in any language you're good. I really enjoyed this um, I do like a bit of stocks and shares um, but this is accessible enough that pretty much anyone can play it. Um, it plays between two to six players. I think we've played it at five. I don't think we've ever gone to six. That's terrifying. Um, plays in about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, we've got these little cheaty cards, which are nice. They tell you the number of trains and the number of shares for each company. So you can keep an eye. Um, black, the black company, for example, has 10 shares. So if you have five, you've got the majority. You don't necessarily need to be collecting them anymore. Um, so this is actually 
really handy. The other thing that I don't talk about very often because usually it's not worth it. The other thing I want to talk about is the box. So the box is actually really nicely organised. We've got little dips for each of the trains. So it does mean in a game you can see what's going on and how many trains are left. It does have paper money, but please forgive it because it's old. So that's fine. Um, obviously, you can use any replacement you want, but this box is pretty neat um, for a game that old. We'd already started dealing with good inserts in 1999, yet there are games these days that still can't seem to crack it. That's a whole other rant, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that is Union Pacific, designed by Alan R. Moon. Um, this is the Amigo version, because this is the German version. I'm sure multiple companies have printed it over the years. I don't know if this is likely to get a reprint, um, because everything is so focused on Ticket to Ride now, and we're getting a million variations of that. Um, and it's a real shame. You can tell it's old school because it's that weird long box. Um, it's really good. If you can pick it up, grab it. It's a super nice introduction to train games, introduction to stocks and shares. It's great. And it plays up to six. Check it out. Um, have a look in your local bring and buy, your local second hand markets. We pick this up um, in a Facebook group try and find it um thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if there's any older gems you'd like to see us have a look at let me know in the comments below click like subscribe all that stuff come and say hello on facebook instagram twitter i play red see you next time bye